John 10, 11 to 16. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a hireling who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he's a hireling and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring and they will hear my voice and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Jesus is our shepherd and his sheep know his voice. He's also the Prince of Peace. Are you listening to his voice or the voice of a Pharisee? The Pharisees demanded a Messiah who would arrive like a king, lead a war, take the lives of their enemies and give them a physical kingdom. The expectation in ancient Israel was for the Messiah to come as a military leader, that he would have qualities of a sage, a high priest, a prophet like Moses, and a military leader. And he was almost always referred to as the king, but by definition, a warrior. But the true Messiah, the true shepherd, who is the Prince of Peace, came to usher in peace. He didn't come to take lives or bring death. Instead, he told his disciples not to use the sword. He taught that those who live by the sword will die by the sword. We see this at his betrayal and arrest in Gethsemane when Jesus made this clear. Matthew 26, 51 states, And behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. Then said Jesus unto him, Put up again thy sword into his place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Even though it was Jesus himself who instructed his disciples to buy a sword, he did this for the sake of enacting a prophetic symbolic act, an act of being ready for a spiritual war, not a physical one. And though his disciples carried a sword, he warns them implicitly not to use it. This was a sword that was not to be used physically. Because Jesus' assignment was to bring life and life more abundantly, to usher in the kingdom of God. And it's important to note that not one single time in the New Testament, did Jesus ever speak of redeeming a physical land? Instead, he speaks consistently of the kingdom of God because his territory was purely spiritual. And his inheritance is purely spiritual, but it's far greater. We cannot use the lens of the Old Testament to try and understand the New Testament and so we have to cease listening to Pharisees and Sadducees, lest we can find ourselves beginning to sound and act like Pharisees and Sadducees, demanding death, demanding war, violence, demanding a physical land, a physical kingdom, a physical temple, and a physical circumcision, etc., we have to look at the Old Testament through the lens of the New Testament because the words of the Old Testament are only a shadow of the truth. His light is truly revealed in the New, but 
in the Old Testament, the Lord hides himself. And we're not called to understand the Old Testament directly at face value, but to perceive the revelation it carries. For example, circumcision. The physical circumcision was an eternal commandment from the Lord in the Old Testament. Eternal means eternal, correct? Genesis 17, 13 states, He who is born in your house and he who is bought with your money must be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. Now, the circumcision remains an eternal commandment. However, its form has shifted. No longer is this a physical act. It is now a spiritual occurrence. And the circumcision of today is the circumcision of the heart, not of the flesh. So we must take on the mind of Christ to perceive what has been hidden, this beautiful revelation carried in the Old Testament. Jesus has redeemed Israel, but not in the way they were expecting. Luke 21, 27 to 28 states, Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory, now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. The redemption Jesus is talking about is not only a personal redemption, but also the redemption of Israel. Jesus fulfilled the inheritance that was promised, but this inheritance that was received did not look the way that they expected. And in fact, many of the Jews flat out rejected what Jesus brought because they demanded their own version of the Messiah and their own version of redemption and the redemption of Israel. So we must be very careful to heed the voice of the one true shepherd. He guides us and there is another voice, the Pharisee, disguised as a shepherd, and he will only lead the sheep astray. So with all matters, we revert to Jesus. What did the Lord Jesus say on the matter? The scriptures reveal, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. John 10, 27 to 28. God bless you. Have a wonderful Passover season. It is by the blood of Jesus, the Passover lamb, that we were redeemed in every possible way from bondage into freedom and into his light. Shalom. I'll see you soon. God bless.